So I'm going to do a quick 15 minutes on how do you get ready for this exam? <clears throat> so years and years ago, this is dating myself for how old I am. Whoops, let me get back in the camera. The camera people are going to be really upset. Um, years ago, I actually took the Oracle Java, one of the Oracle Java certifications. Big multiple choice test. And honestly, the certification never got me a job. But what it did is it forced me to study things in so much detail that when I was talking with somebody and I could debug something and identify it, that's what got me the work. The piece of paper doesn't always do it, although we're going to do our best to, to make it so that you know, hiring managers are as aware of us as you are, or more so. But the process of studying to learn it is really important. Any developers here who've been working since the iPhone started 10 years ago? Yeah, there's a bunch of us. We were so used to building things for the desktop. Have things changed an awful lot since then? 10 years, it's kind of like you have to almost have to start over. And a lot of developers are still working with habits and frameworks that come from a pre-mobile era. So when we were doing the data analysis, what we discovered is, is that every single job description had the word mobile in it. Everybody wants mobile, and the development techniques are different. So we focused the CERT on core mobile development techniques, the kinds of things where if you walk in and you interview, you're going to be able to answer the questions easily. And some people, by the way, have said, hey, the CERT's, some of these questions are kind of easy. Yeah, if you know your stuff, they're actually easy. There are no trick questions. Sometimes you have to read carefully, but there's no trick questions. So let's go down the list. So basic website layout and styling. How many people here can do responsive design? How many people use Bootstrap? Yeah, about a third of the room. That's one of the crutches that you usually use for design, but you want to be able to build a site without bootstrap. So we have some questions in there on doing responsive design. We say, we don't want you to use any libraries. We want you to use just plain old CSS. We'll give you a modern browser. We'll give you Chrome. So if you want Flexbox or Grid or whatever, go for it. We're happy. But you should be able to do this on a plain browser. So if you haven't learned that, you, know, you learn it there. So we, teach, so we have some basic responsive design questions. And we have courses out at Udacity that teach specifics of responsive design. And there's links in the notes in the study guide on how to get there. That's the other thing. Everything that we're doing in the test, not the actual question, but every subject area is in the study guide. There's no tricks. Right? We're not trying to fool you. We're not trying to make you fail. We're trying to help you succeed as long as we stay on the legal side of it and we don't just give you the answers. Front end networking. How many people are still using XML HTTP request? Ooh, no hands, one hand, okay. One hand kind of, oh, maybe, okay. That's all right. We have a 12 step program for that. <laughs> so, most people are using fetch, right? How many people are using jQuery uh, Ajax? See, such a modern crowd, I love you. Um, again, no hands. In the outside world, the, the ratio is actually flipped. So front end networking, we go through fetch, we go through how it works, we test you on that knowledge. Can you do things on the network using fetch, using promises? Can you do proper error handling? I'll give you a, a secret here. A whole lot of developers forget to do error handling, right? You need to get in the habit now that you've got an easy way to handle them of dealing with errors, you should at minimum be raising exceptions when things go wrong out of fetch. Accessibility. I'm not going to say a lot about it. Accessibility is a huge area, but every developer needs to know at least accessible markup, the stuff that makes screen readers work. Now, yes, there's JavaScript you should know if you're building like new widgets and you need to trap the cursor and you need to do all that, but what that's a specialist job. What every developer needs at a minimum is really good accessible markup. And so we're going to have Rob come in in a bit and walk you through that. But we test, can you take a site, can you take a basic site and make it work with the screen reader? Surprising how many developers want to skip that prompt. You know, but don't skip it. It's worth learning because here's the other thing. 
Most people, most developers are going to kind of go, eh, skip it. Yeah, but then you're one of the unusual people that actually has the skill. And it's not a hard skill to pick up. It's just not many people have been motivated. Well, we've got some motivation. Looking at the market, it's necessary. Progressive web apps. How many people know what an app shell is? Okay, so that's interesting because basically, okay, how many people you how many people have written web apps on the back end using Ruby or PHP or so you know how you have some standard Chrome around the sides of the page and then you have content that changes that Chrome around the sides of the page, all your common stuff, that's an app shell on the front end. So you want to be able to take and cache all of those app shell assets on your front end, everything your app needs to do a startup, and stick them in a cache. And that way, if you're offline, the app can still come up. Now, if you've got dynamic content like news stories, best practice usually is you keep those in another cache and you manage that cache separately because you want to be able to age things out or whatever. So knowing, just knowing how to look at an app and say, OK, I'm going to need these files at startup. These are my data files. I'm going, to need, I'm going to need them right after startup. These are dynamic things that, OK, I can afford to lose or afford to not have. Put them in different caches with different cache lives. This skill, which is not terribly difficult, but is a little shift in thinking, is a critical one for building good, prof uh, good progressive web apps. And it's really straightforward to do. Now, one way to practice it is to use a tool called Workbox which generates service workers for you. But it helps to also just learn the simplest, how do you write a really simple service worker by hand? You know, the one build popped up on the screen wasn't that long. It's really about that easy. It's, it's one of those things that it should be as much a boilerplate in your, in your brain as a basic HTML page. Performance optimization and caching. So the caching, again, applies to progressive web apps. Performance optimization is all of the standard, look, how do I cut my load time on my app? Can you do it? We give you some code. We say, hey, this isn't very performant. Fix it. Right? We give you a site. Maybe you need to shrink some images. Maybe you need to cut an alternate image version. Maybe you need to change some code or the way it's written. It's the same performance tuning you do on an app every day. And what we recommend is that you learn Lighthouse, which is a Google tool for measuring and rating applications and telling you how well you're doing and giving you very specific instructions on how to fix things. And actually, Lighthouse is interesting. We have developers now who literally use it as their guide on how to build an app. They, they throw a skeleton page up there. They run Lighthouse. Lighthouse says, hey, you, you need to do this, this, and this. And they're like, OK, I'll go do it. It's, it's kind of like a really bizarre version of test-driven development. Right? I think it's pester-driven development. Right? Lighthouse pesters you until you fix it. Um, but it works really well. If you learn Lighthouse, you do great at this. But not only that, you'll do great at your job. Because it will identify an awful lot of issues that you would need to fix anyway for a production site. So it makes you more efficient. It's like having a good IDE. Right? The smarts in your dev tools that know how to look out for common problems and warn you what Lighthouse is going to do. Testing and debugging, we give you problems like this that cover the other areas, but there's some bugs in the code. Your job's to go fix it. It's what you do every day. Mobile web forms, honestly, there is a Udacity course on it that's worth going through. So in most cases, the cart abandonment rate, when somebody goes to check out on mobile and they get that form, and they look at it and they either decide to fill it out or they look at it and decide to say, oh, I'm closing the app. How many people close the app? What percentage? Go ahead. Oh, you, you say you do? <laughs> the typical number is about 95%. So with a few simple changes, and I do mean simple, you can make that number plummet. Usually what we see is with a few extra bits of syntax, a little bit of code, you can cut that in half or better. Think about it. If half the people who are closing that page go ahead and buy from you instead, you're probably getting a raise on the next paycheck. 
you know, it's a lot of money. So mobile web forms, that's what we're looking at. And then we do use some very straightforward ES2015 because it's where everyone's going. ES2015, things like fat arrow functions, um, some of the spread and rest, you know, basic, basic syntax tools that make JavaScript much easier to learn and work with. You know, we want you to know those because you're seeing more and more of them out in the wild. But all in all, does this really look like a difficult list of stuff to learn? It's not really. Most devs will figure this out on their own in about three to four years. My guess is, and I've been teaching a long time, that if you sat down with a study guide, you could get that level of skill in six months or less with focused study, with practicing, with building some app shells, some PWAs, building some sample apps, you know, trying stuff out, doing some accessibility markup, doing some performance tuning. I think it would probably, on your own, you could probably do it about six, in about six months. In a class, <clears throat> probably a week. It's really about focusing your learning on where are the core trends these days in development. Now, here's a funny one. Okay, we said that most developers pass at about the three to four year mark. And it was really, really interesting because the data came back from a lot of testers and it was like zero to three years, almost nobody passed. And suddenly there was a big spike and then a bigger spike at three and four. What do you think five looked like? It went way down. Why would people with more experience have trouble with this exam? That's right, because they're stuck 10 years ago or eight years ago. You know, if you ever want some fun, just open up a random website, open up the network tab, go look at how much stuff they're loading. Performance will sink you. Lack of accessibility will sink you. Um, loading lots of jQuery. Bad, excuse me, error handling. Most apps just fall over and die. You learn these things, and now you're going to be building great apps for many, many years to come. And that's the idea behind the CERT, was when I came up with the idea originally, I've been a developer a long time. I know what it's like to go out and go looking for a job. I know what it's like. Some places are going to go looking for that degree from Stanford or wherever, right? They want the A-listers, and they want you to be in the A-lister companies. And it's really hard to stand out if that's not what you have. But if you can show somebody you know your stuff, right? When I interviewed with Peter, I was working, I was an independent consultant, and I was working for a training consulting firm. Not what you'd call, not like superstar material. I wasn't all over YouTube, but I knew my stuff. <clears throat> That's what this is about. You, you do the practice, you do the learning, you take the cert, and it shows that you are a really skilled developer with a really strong foundation that could walk in and pick up a job. And the informal feedback that I have heard from a lot of hiring managers is they want that. They're really interested. I can't say anything formally, right? The lawyer cats will come get me and it won't be pretty. You know, but the informal feedback, they're pretty interested out there. So I can't promise you a job, but I have some pretty good hope for this. And we're right on time. Mm -hmm.